This John Doe meeting is going to be one of the biggest things that ever happened. That's Why, so. they're coming from all over. Trains, oh. boxcars, <laughs> wagons. Oh. Look out! Hello, bodyguards. Hey, had your dinner yet? No, Jeff. Oh, that's all right. Well, look, no, go ahead and have your dinner. Wait I'm a gonna... minute, John. Hello, Mr. Connell. How are you, John? John, I want to have a little talk with you. What's, what's the matter? Are you falling? Come on. Hey, boss. Oh, quiet, quiet, quiet. Say, tell me something. Did, did you read the speech you're going to make tonight? No, I never read the speeches before I make them. I get more of a kick out of it that way. Uh-huh. That's just exactly what I thought. Beanie, go on down to the office, tell Pop to give you the speech. There's a copy on my desk. Gee whiz, boss, you know Mr. Norton told me not to leave him, not even for a minute. Go on, go on, go on, go on. We'll be at Jim's bar up the street. You're a nice guy, John. I like you. You're gentle. I always like gentle people. Me, I'm, I'm hard. <sighs> yep, I'm hard. But you want to know something? I've got a weakness. I guess that, would you? Well, I have. Want to know this? Star Spangled Banner. Screw you, huh? Well, maybe it is, but play the Star Spangled Banner. I'm a sucker for it. Always gets me right here. Know what I mean? Yeah, it gets me right back here. Oh, back there, huh? Well, every man to his own taste. You, you weren't old enough. You weren't old enough for the world war, were you, Jim? No, no, of course not. No, you, you must have been just kidding. I was. I was just ripe. And learn to go. You know what my old man did when I joined up? He joined up, too. Got to be a sergeant. And here's a kick for you. We were in the same outfit. <laughs> Funny, huh? Hmm? He was killed, you know. I saw him get it. I was right there. I saw it with my own eyes. Me, I came out without a scratch. That is, accepting my ulcers. <coughs> I should be drinking milk, you know, this stuff is poison. Hey, Tubby. Yes, Mr. Canal. What do you say, huh? All right. Yep, I'm a sucker for this country. I'm a sucker for the Star Spangled Banner, and I'm a sucker for this country. I like what we got here. I like it. A guy can say what he wants and do what he wants without having a bandit shoved through his belly. And that's all right, isn't it? You betcha. Yeah. Well, we don't want anybody coming around changing that, do we? No, sir. No, sir. When I do, I get mad. I get boiling mad. And right now, John, I'm sizzling. I get mad for a lot of other guys besides myself. I get mad for a guy named Washington. And a guy named Jefferson. And Lincoln. Lighthouses, John. Lighthouses in a foggy world. You know what I mean? Yeah, you bet. Mm. Listen, pal. This fifth, this fifth column stuff is pretty rotten, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. And you'd feel like an awful sucker if you found yourself marching right in the middle of it, wouldn't you? You. you. Of course, you would have known it because you're gentle. But that's what you're doing. You're mixed up with a skunk. A no good, dangerous skunk. So you're not talking about Mr. Norton, are you? I'm not talking about his grandfather's pet poodle. You must be wrong, Mr. Connell. Because he's been marvelous about the John Doe clubs. Yeah. <laughs> Say, you're as sold on this John Doe idea, aren't you? Sure. Yeah, sure. I don't blame you. So am I. It's a beautiful miracle. 
A miracle that can only happen right here in the good old USA. And I think it's terrific. What do you think of that? Me, hard-boiled canal, and I think it's plenty terrific. All right. Now, supposing a certain unmissionable worm whose initials are D.B. was trying to use that to shove his way into the White House so he could put the screws on so he could turn out the lights in those lighthouses. What would you say about that, huh? Nobody's going to do that, Mr. Cannell. They can't use the John Doe clubs for politics. That's the main idea. Is that so? Then what's a big political boss like Hammer doing in town? And a labor leader like Bennett? And a lot of other big shots are up at D.B.'s house right now. Wolves, John. Wolves. Waiting to cut up the John Doe's. <coughs> Wait till you get a gander of the speech you're going to make tonight. You're all wet. Miss Mitchell writes those speeches. Nobody can make her write that kind of stuff. They can, huh? Who do you think writes them? My Aunt Emma? I know she writes them. And gets a big bonus for doing them, too. A mink coat and a diamond bracelet. Don't write them. Why, that gold-grabbing dame would double-cross her own mother for a handful of Chinese yam. Cut up. If you weren't drunk, I'd... Hey, boss. Here's the speech, boss. Hey. Go on and read it, John, and then start sucking. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Doe. Toby. Yes, sir. Better bring me a glass of milk. I'm smoking too much. Yes, Charlie? Got everything all set? Fine. John Doe been taken care of? Good. How many people do you think will be there? 15,000. Oh, my, that's fine. Now, listen, Charlie. As soon as John Doe stops talking about me, I want you to start that demonstration and make it a big one, you understand? Don't worry about that, D.B. My boys are there. They'll take care of it. What? Yes, I'll be there 15 minutes after I get your call. Why, Mr. Doe? Where are they? In the dining room, sir. Now, gentlemen, I think we're about ready to throw that great big bombshell. Yeah, well, it's about time. Even a conservative estimate shows that we can count on anywhere between 10 and 20 million John Doe votes. Now, add to that the labor vote that Mr. Bennett will throw in. And the votes controlled by Mr. Hammett and the rest of you gentlemen in your own territories, and nothing can stop us. As I said before, I'm with you, providing you can guarantee the John Doe vote. Don't worry about that. You can count on me on one condition. Little Bennett's got to be taken care of. Didn't I tell you that everybody in this room would be taken care of? My agreement with you gentlemen stands. I'm with you, D.B., but I still think it's a very daring thing we're attempting. These are daring times, Mr. Barrington. We're coming to a new order of things. There's too much talk been going on in this country. Certainly. Too many concessions have been made. True. What the American people need is an iron hand. You're right, right. right. That's true. You're right. right. quite right, D.B. Right. Discipline. Right. Right. And now, may I offer a little toast to Miss Ann Mitchell, the brilliant and beautiful lady who is responsible for all this. Miss Mitchell. Miss Mitchell. Miss Mitchell. Mr. Norton, I'd like to talk to you alone for a minute. Oh, oh. Miss Mitchell has something to say to us. Well, that's fine. Oh, please, 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 please. Please. Please.